thoughts? Uh, so uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, inviting me to, to speak here. I'm going to talk about some work that I'm doing with Andrea Montanari on debiasing a lasso with an accurate precision matrix. We're uh, nearing completion of this work, so it, it should uh, appear on the archive uh, shortly. Um, and OK, the debiasing the lasso is a, a, uh, a topic that's uh, studied in the statistics literature. The reason I think this talk appears in this session is that uh, we approach this problem using uh, exact asymptotic techniques uh, using uh, from uh, the convex uh, Gaussian min-max theorem. So, so the setting here is um, we have a linear model. This uh, linear model has uh, a bunch of features. So we have p features in this uh, matrix X, uh, and we have uh, one feature in this uh, vector W. And so really, this is just a p plus one uh, dimensional uh, linear model, but I sort of separate this special feature W because um, in this talk, I'm only going to care about estimating beta and uh, I'm only going to be interested in, in theta insofar as it, it helps me estimate beta. Uh, we're going to make a random design assumption and uh, the assumption is going to be that all the features, both W and X are jointly Gaussian, but uh, in the spirit of separating out this special feature W, I'm going to write the Gaussian distribution in this way. So. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to assume that these uh, features X, which I'll call the nuisance features, are, are jointly Gaussian with some covariance matrix uh, sigma, and that the special feature W uh, uh, depends upon the nuisance features through this uh, linear model that has uh, parameter gamma. Uh, and this model up here, I'm going to call the outcome model because it's a linear model for the outcome variable Y. And this linear model, I'm going to call the uh, precision model. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, it's related to the uh, inverse covariance matrix for uh, all the features jointly. And the inverse covariance matrix is often called the precision matrix. So I call this the precision model and this gamma, the sort of precision parameter. Um, and OK, I'm going to make this sparsity assumption on the unknown uh, parameter. And my goal is, like I said, to estimate beta. Our, our theoretical results are going to establish uh, consistency of a certain estimator, though what we're motivated by is, is, is you know, really creating an also approximately unbiased estimator for beta. And you know, ultimately, we would love to be able to show that this estimator is, is normally distributed asymptotically. We, we think it probably is, but, but we, you know, that's purely a, a conjecture at this point. Um, OK, so let me just. Uh, describe some, you know, maybe uh, limitations of, of, of some other methods. So one way that you could estimate uh, beta is to estimate beta and this nuisance parameter theta simultaneously using a lasso. So this is the lasso here where, again, I'm sort of separating out this special feature W in my notation. And uh, let me just start with a, a simulation that, that shows that uh, the lasso estimate of beta can can be uh, quite bad. So, so here, uh, uh, beta is equal to one, and I have uh, 400 samples, and the dimensionality of of the linear model is 500, so it's larger than n, though not dramatically so. I should say that you know what you should have in mind here, as in I think the other talks in this session, is that we're thinking about sort of a proportional asymptotic regime. So this is sort of in some sort of proportional high dimensional uh, regime. The uh, nuisance features are just independent standard Gaussians. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the outcome and precision parameters in such a way that uh, the uh, sort of uh, estimation of beta is is you know substantially degraded uh, when you estimate uh, beta using the lasso. So I'm going to actually take the sparsity of each of these parameters to be the same. In fact, I'm going to take the parameters to be exactly the same, uh, and I'm not going to sort of have time to provide intuition for why this way of determining the parameters is sort of really bad uh, if we're interested in uh, estimating beta. Uh, but uh, this mu parameter is, is sort of a signal strength parameter. It's the L2 norm of, of these uh, parameters. And what we have in the plot is on the y-axis, I have the bias of my estimate of beta computed over 10 uh, simulations. And on the x-axis, I have uh, the signal strength parameter mu and I compute the bias of my estimate of beta uh, for uh, three different uh, sparsity levels. 
And we see that when there's sort of uh, no signal strength, the uh, estimate of beta is, is slightly biased. It's, it's biased uh, downward. It's actually biased sort of on the order of the regularization parameter. Uh, but when I sort of increase the signal strength and, and, and set my nuisance parameters in this way, the, the bias actually gets inflated uh, and uh, degrades uh, substantially. And the degradation is, is exacerbated by having a more complex model. So that, you know, actually already when sparsity is 10, things are quite bad. And when sparsity is 100, which is you know, comparable to the sample size and the dimensionality, the, the degradation is, is even a bit worse. Um, so, okay, how well can we hope the vanilla LASA to perform uh, in terms of estimating a, a single coordinate? Uh, and so there's some results on this. So one result uh, involves making an incoherence assumption. So assuming that there's, you know, you know, basically negligible correlations between all the features and uh, a, an ultra sparsity assumption. So you assume the sparsity is, is smaller than uh, uh, square root of n. Uh, and here you say that the, the error in estimating beta is sort of on the order of the regularization parameters square root of log uh, p over n, but, but these are very strong assumptions. They were violated in the simulation I just showed. And uh, okay, I don't know what these constants are, but I think the simulation maybe should lead us to believe that you know, this bound is also not really describing what's going on in this simulation. Uh, now, another set of results, and uh, okay, really the ultra sparsity uh, term here doesn't apply to the second bullet point, so perhaps I should have given this slide a different title, but uh, you can sort of under weaker assumptions, compatibility or restricted eigenvalue conditions, which are, I think, satisfied in my simulations, uh, show these weaker bounds on the estimation error of beta, and, and these are really quite bad uh, bounds. So if you're familiar with the lasso literature, this is the sort of L1 error of the lasso. This is the L2 error of the lasso, and so this result would tell you that you, know, you can consistently estimate beta if you can consistently estimate the whole parameter. So that's a, that's a pretty tall order for if we're only interested in estimating a very low dimensional thing, we have to estimate this very high dimensional thing. Well, so, okay. So now I'm gonna uh, move on from just the vanilla last. I'm talking about other approaches to try to target estimation to uh, uh, beta. And I'm gonna begin with a success story uh, when we have you know, accurate knowledge of this parameter precision parameter gamma. And so um, here's one thing that we can do. It's called the debias lasso. And it involves starting with the uh, lasso estimate of, of beta uh, and then adding this correction term. And I, I don't have time to you know, motivate or describe you know, where this correction term comes from. Um, it shows up in, in AMP iterations, for example. But um, uh, what you have here is it's, it's a correction term. It depends upon your data, W, X, and Y. It depends upon your lasso estimates for the uh, parameter of interest and the nuisance parameter. And it involves the true precision parameter. So we have you know, accurate knowledge of, of the precision parameter. And there's lots of theorems uh, about this estimator. I'm gonna just present sort of not the strongest versions of them because uh, in this talk, I'm not you know, thinking about asymptotic normality, uh, which is, you know, often uh, discussed in the literature of the deep bias lasso. But, um, you know, we can, we should, we should expect that the sort of uh, estimation error of, of this deep bias lasso is of order one over square root of n. And, you know, there are indeed some results uh, to this effect, which hold in sort of a proportional regime. So uh, in this uh, paper by uh, Leo Mialan and Andrea Montanari, and then myself, Andrea and uh, Yu Ting Wei, uh, you know, we can sort of show that this debiasing uh, procedure has sort of for the typical coordinate, uh, this type of behavior. Um, and uh, in this paper by uh, Pierre Bellic and Tsunu Zeng, they established that uh, this occurs for a, a fixed coordinate of, of interest. Uh, if, well, if, if you start with an assumption that the vanilla lasso is consistent, which is a, a strong assumption, uh, or if you know that n is bigger than p, though it doesn't need to be dramatically bigger than p. Okay, so you know this thing works in, in anticipation of of what's to come. I'm going to sort of try to show what these methods do diagrammatically. Uh, so this sort of debiasing lap the lasso procedure with an accurate precision model works as follows: you have a bunch of data, you use it to estimate beta and theta using the lasso, uh, and then you have some sort of prior knowledge of the true parameter gamma, uh, which doesn't come from your data. You combine them in some fancy way to construct this debias estimate data. 
And indeed, if you do some simulations in exactly the same set setting that I showed in the previous slide, uh, you find that the bias of this estimator is um, you know, basically zero uh, across uh, signal strengths and uh, sparsity regimes. Okay, okay so now I'm gonna show you another method. So now we're gonna, we, we successfully debias the lasso with an accurate precision model. So now we're going to unsuccessfully debias the lasso with an inaccurate precision model. Okay, so what if you don't know gamma? Right? So one thing if you don't, to do if you don't know gamma is to uh, estimate it using your data, right? And so, so here's gonna be our new sort of data pipeline for how we're gonna attempt to uh, target estimation to beta. We're gonna have our labeled data. We're gonna construct the lasso estimate of beta and theta in the same way we did before. Uh, but now we're gonna uh, get an estimate of gamma also from the same data and we're gonna use the lasso, okay? So in particular, here's the debias lasso. It's exactly the same as what I showed on the previous slide, except now in place of the true gamma, I'm gonna put an estimate of gamma that I got from my data. And okay, unfortunately things don't work as well. Here's, here's sort of the, the same uh, you know, uh, simulation that I've, I've been showing throughout the talk so far. And, and we see that at least when you have, uh, you know, if you have you know, very sparse model then it, it seems to work, but if you have uh, you know, even not a dramatically large sparsity, it, it starts to fail. Okay, now, is this just sort of a feature of, of the procedure I'm using or is this fundamental? And um, well, there's not a straight, straightforward answer to that, but I think there are some results that would lead us to believe that, that maybe it is fundamental or it is at least hard to beat uh, or hard to get something to work when you don't know gamma. So, you know, a, 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 a result in, in this literature on, on debiasing is, is from uh, Tony Kai and, and Zijin Guo and uh, was refined by uh, Adele Java Martyr and Andrea Montanari. And it says that the uh, Estimation of beta has a uh, minimax lower bound of this form. In particular, you have this term, which involves the sparsity of the outcome model and the sparsity of the precision model. Uh, and if you're familiar with the lasso literature, you know that uh, when this uh, term goes to zero, it means we can either estimate gamma or, or theta consistently uh, using the lasso. And so what this would sort of suggest is that uh, you know, maybe in order to sort of successfully target estimation to beta, we need to uh, consistently uh, estimate at least one of these uh, parameters and, and know it accurately. Uh, and if we're in proportional asymptotics, uh, which is sort of the, the regime of this session, then uh, estimating these parameters consistently is not, is not possible, uh, just information theoretically. So uh, perhaps we are discouraged that we will be successful in consistently estimate beta in this session, so in, in this setting. Uh, okay, so uh, now that I've constructed a bit of a straw man, uh, I'm gonna tell you about how to uh, successfully debias the lasso with an inaccurate precision model. Okay, and this is now, the, now we're finally at the topic of, of our paper. Um, so uh, the key idea that we're gonna use is that we're gonna have an inaccurate estimate of gamma, but it's gonna be an unbiased estimate of gamma. Okay, so this because it's unbiased, we're going to we're actually be able to do something. So yeah, here's our new data pipeline, and we're going to be in a slightly new setting now where we're imagining that we have sort of a semi-supervised uh, setting. So we have a bunch of labeled data, but we also have some unlabeled data. We don't have a dramatically large amount of unlabeled data so that we can sort of consistently estimate gamma, but we do have sort of more total samples than P, the dimensionality of the parameter, so we can get an unbiased estimate of gamma. Okay, we're going to combine our unlabeled data and our labeled data to get a, an OLS estimate of gamma, which is uh, unbiased. Uh, and then we're going to get the lasso estimate of theta just from the labeled data. And we're going to combine them in now a new way. We're not going to use the same form as the debiased lasso to create what I'm going to call the sort of debiased plus estimate of beta. Okay, and so here's just, uh, you know, explicitly what we're doing. So I'll just remind you that these are our linear models. This is the outcome model and this is the precision model. And um, uh, the, uh, uh, the estimate of, of beta that we're gonna use is written here. So we have some sort of empirical correlation of, uh, of, of fitted residuals where, where here we're using this sort of estimate from both the labeled and unlabeled data of gamma. Here we're using the lasso estimate of theta that only uses the labeled data. And we have this sort of complicated uh, correction term out front. Okay, so this is the debias lasso plus, or the, the debias plus estimate of, of beta. And uh, in our simulations in exactly the same setting where now there's just the added caveat that we have some unlabeled data. So we have 350 unlabeled samples giving a total of 
750 samples, which is larger than 500, but not so large that you would expect to be able to consistently estimate the parameter gamma. And okay, we see a bit more noise in this, in this simulation, but we seem to have corrected the bias across of all of the uh, signal strength and uh, uh, sparsity regimes. And indeed, we you know prove this as a theorem. So uh, uh, we're in sort of a proportional asymptotics, though I should mention that okay, our results are not uh, really asymptotic, and, and we're not making too many or really any assumptions about you know empirical distributions converging or or spectrum of, of covariance matrices converging as you know often occurs in this literature. We're just saying take any limit uh, in which uh, the number of samples you have is some non-negligible fraction of, of the dimensionality of your parameter. And if sigma has some bounded significant values and theta is sufficiently sparse and some other conditions hold, then this D bias plus estimate is, is a consistent estimate of theta. Uh, and you know, I should mark, remark that sufficiently sparse you know, is permissive of, of sort of proportional uh, sparsity. And so in my remaining time, and uh, I think like so, I, did, I forgot to take a note of when I started. Uh, so hopefully I have a, just a couple more minutes. So uh, these the proof techniques, I think, are what justify the presence of this presentation in this session. Uh, so we're going to prove this using some exact asymptotics. Uh, and I'll just briefly describe what, what they are. So it turns out that uh, this problem with consistently estimating beta can be sort of reduced to this uh, a separate problem in, in linear models. And so, so here's sort of this. We have uh, two linear models, the, the same features, uh, but they have different uh, underlying parameters and they have correlated noise. Okay, so the noise from these two linear models is correlated with covariance matrix S. And there's a question of, can we uh, estimate the sort of covariance matrix for the noise S? And if you can, then actually I can use my construction of this estimate to uh, consistently estimate beta in, in the original setting I described. And so this is sort of related to the problem of noise estimation um, in uh, high dimensional or noise variance estimation in high dimensional statistics uh, and is related to a construction of a noise variance estimate in the lasso that was proposed by Andrea Montanari and, and mostly by Opti in 2013. Uh, now what we're gonna do to construct an estimate of the covariance matrix S is uh, we're gonna have a regression estimator in both linear models. So we're gonna use the same data set and simultaneously run to you know, construct an estimator for uh, each parameter using sort of the same data. Okay. Now, uh, what's been described in this session is, uh, you know, in part, uh, you know, results which give exact characterizations of the limits of, of some quantities uh, related to uh, each regression estimator marginally. Okay, so a, a standard result in this you know, very large literature, which I haven't listed exhaustively on this slide, is uh, you know providing a prediction for what the limit of um, say the, the size of the residuals or the size of the L2 estimation error is for one regression at a time. Uh, and what we're going to need, because if you recall, the sort of de-biased estimator involves the correlation of, of residuals, uh, we're going to need uh, some knowledge of, of, of the limit of a quantity that involves uh, both regressions uh, simultaneously. So we're going to need to know something about the sort of joint distribution of two regression estimators computed on the same data. Um, and uh, okay, that's what we provide. I'm not going to go into details and the archive will be posted soon. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, what we do, which I think is sort of of more general interest than just this debiasing uh, the lasso uh, question in particular is provide uh, an exact asymptotics for the joint distribution of two estimators in, in, in linear models. Uh, and we use uh, Gordon's uh, comparison inequality to uh, construct this sort of uh, exact characterization of, of, of the joint distribution. Uh, there was a paper by uh, Marco Mondelli, uh, Venka Tarana, and Trampolitis, which you know, also uh, looked, used exact asymptotics from A and P uh, to uh, uh, study the joint distribution of, of, of estimators in, in a GLM. Uh, here we use uh, Gordon's inequality to come up with this uh, joint characterization. Uh, we're able to show consistency at the de-bias estimate uh, using, based on the last estimator, but we also study uh, consistent estimation of beta where we estimate the nuisance parameters using uh, uh, ridge regression. And I should remark that you know we provide more general results than the one I, I stated in this in this in this presentation. 
uh, and the results apply both to a semi-supervised setting and to a fully supervised setting. Uh, as I've already alluded to, the results are, are, are non-asymptotic, uh, uh, and we provide, you know, you know, really the basis of the result is, is consistently estimating this covariance matrix uh, S, which is a generalization of this uh, result by Mohsen Bayati and Andrea Montanari. And uh, okay, the archive is coming soon, and I hope uh, I hope it really is coming uh, very soon, and uh, I hope you'll take a look when it when it's posted.